Hi, everyone. May, May 6, uh, 2021, sorry. This is a very long article, but I am reading it because it's also a very important article. Whitney Webb is the uh, investigative journalist who wrote this article. And this is what is coming. A digital dictatorship. The details are important. So you did hear Biden, uh, maybe you didn't, I don't know, Biden proposing a new agency to combat cancer, to cure cancer. Well, there's a lot behind that. The new proposal by the Biden administration to create a health-focused federal agency modeled after DARPA is not what it appears to be. Promoted as a way to end cancer, this resuscitated health DARPA, and it conceals a very dangerous agenda. Rings? We'll get to that. So, Biden, widely praised in mainstream media and healthcare focused media for his call to create a new biomedical research agency modeled after the U.S. military's high risk, high reward defense advanced research projects agency, DARPA. Touted by the president, the agency would seek to develop innovative and breakthrough treatments for cancer, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, with a call to end cancer as we know it. Now, <laughs> this, uh, well, this has been going on my entire life. Now, the, uh, the search for a cure of cancer and Wow, these cancer nonprofits and and uh, the researchers have made an awful lot of money. Still, we don't seem to be able to cure cancer. Well, there are a lot of cures, but hey, let's forget about that. Um, all you have to do is do the research and you'll find out. But the proposed agency would merge national security, and health security in such a way as to use both physical and mental health warning signs to prevent outbreaks of disease or violence before they occur. Such a system is a recipe for a technocratic pre-crime organization with the potential to criminalize both mental and physical illness as well as wrong think. Okay, so the Biden administration asked Congress for $6.5 billion to fund the agency, largely guided by Biden's recently confirmed top science advisor, Eric Lander. Lander, formerly the head of the Silicon Valley-dominated Broad Institute. And if you know anything about the Broad Institute and its nefarious doings, you will hopefully have that eyebrow raised. It has been controversial for, or Lander has been controversial for his ties to eugenics, eugenicists, and child sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein, and his rel relatively recent praise for James Watson, an overtly racist eugenicist. Despite that, Lander is set to be confirmed by the Senate and Congress and is reportedly significantly enthusiastic about the proposed new health DARPA, set to be called ARPA or HARPA. Housed within the National Institute of Health, it would raise the NIH's budget to $51 billion or over $51 billion. Unlike other agencies at NIH, ARPA, H, would differ 
in that the projects it funds would not be peer-reviewed prior to approval. Hmm. Instead, hand-picked program managers would make all funding decisions. ARPA will likely heavily fund and promote mRNA vaccines as one of the breakthroughs that will cure cancer. See, these mRNA vaccines will be the vaccine. It's going to cure cancer, and it'll be a treatment for tuberculosis and HIV. And of course, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is right in there. Other innovative technologies that will be a focus of this agency, less well known, but more concerning. The long road to ARPA H. Not new and exclusive to the Biden administration. There was a previous attempt to create health DARPA during the Trump administration. In 2019, Biden began to promote the idea during his campaign uh, using a very different justification for the agency than what had been pitched by its advocates to Trump. In 2019, the same foundation and individuals currently backing Biden's ARPA H had urged then President Trump to create HARPA, not for the main purpose of researching treatments for cancer and Alzheimer's, but to stop mass shootings before they happen through the monitoring of Americans for neuropsychiatric warning signs. Wow, pre-crime. Okay, one man has been the driving force behind Harpa, former vice chair of General Electric and former president of NBC Universal, Robert Wright, through his wife, his wife, uh, well, the foundation named for his wife, the Suzanne Wright Foundation. Wright has spent years lobbying for an agency that would develop biomedical capabilities, detection tools, treatments, medical devices, cures, etc., for the millions of Americans who are not benefiting, benefiting from the current system. Don't you love it how they, oh, um, frame, frame what they say publicly. It's all for the benefit of all those people who can't afford um, medical services, and they're just fabulous people. They love, love all of us so much. I really would love it if Americans would begin to question what they hear instead of just buying it wholesale. He, like Biden, has cloaked the agency's actual purpose by claiming it will be mainly focused on treating cancer. Wright's 2019 pers uh, proposal to his personal friend, Trump, revealed its underlying ambitions. First proposed by Wright in 2019, HARPA would be safe home, short for stopping aberrant fatal events by helping overcome mental extremes. Safe home. Maybe you could park safe home in the White House, in Congress, in Washington, D.C., to stop aberrant fatal events by helping overcome mental extremes. Seems a lot of those in Washington, D.C. have those mental extremes. Safe home would suck up masses of private data from Apple Watches, Fitbits, Amazon Echo, Google Home, and other consumer electronic devices, as well as information from healthcare providers to determine if an individual might be likely to commit a crime. The data would be analyzed by artificial intelligence algorithms, 
for early diagnosis of neuropsychiatric violence. This is coming soon. The Department of Justice's pre-crime approach, known as DEEP, was activated just months before Trump left office. It was also justified as a way to stop mass shootings before they happen. Soon after Biden's inauguration, the new administration began using information from social media to make pre-crime arrests as part of its approach toward combating domestic terror. Given the history of Silicon Valley companies collaborating with the government on matters of warrantless surveillance, it appears that aspects of safe home may already be covertly active under Biden, only waiting for the formalization of ARPA to be legitimized as public policy. We're very close to entering that world. The national security applications of Robert Wright's Harper, Harpa are also illustrated by the man who was its lead scientific advisor, former head of DARPA's Biological Technologies Office, Jeffrey Ling. Not only is Ling the main scientific advisor of Harper, Harpa, but the original proposal by Wright would have Ling both personally, personally design Harpa and lead it once it was established. Ling's work at DARPA can be summarized by BTO's stated mission, which is to work toward merging biology, engineering, and computer science to harness the power of natural systems for national security. BTO favored technologies are also poised to be the mainstays of HARPA, which plans to specifically use advancements in biotechnology, supercomputing, computing, big data, data coming from you and me, and artificial intelligence to accomplish its goals. Now, remember, Trump was a big biotech guy. The direct DARPA connection to HARPA underscores that the agenda behind this coming agency dates back to the failed biosurveillance project of DARPA's Total Information Awareness Program, which was launched after the events of September 11, 2001. And the Total Information Awareness Program Oh, there were a lot of hearings in Congress, and um, and I do not believe that any of these programs, you know, when when suddenly they can't get legislation passed or they can't get any congressional agreement, they still are using them. Our Department of Defense doesn't stop anything. Um, and it's unfortunate also that Americans just don't look into how our government operates. If, if they can't get congressional approval, then they just switch it to another agency and they go black on the program. That's it. They continue these programs. So the uh, TIA, the Total Information Awareness Biosurveillance Project, sought to develop the necessary information technologies and resulting prototype capable of detecting the covert release of a biological pathogen automatically and significantly earlier than traditional approaches accomplishing this by monitoring non-traditional data sources, including pre-diagnostic medical data and behavioral indicators. While nominally, nominally 
focused on bioterrorist attacks. The Total Information Awareness's Biosurveillance Project also sought to acquire early detection capabilities for normal disease outbreaks. Normal, like the flu. Biosurveillance and related DARPA projects at that time, such as LifeLog, sought to harvest data through the mass use of some sort of wearable or handheld technology. These DARPA programs were ultimately shut down due to the controversy over claims. They would be used to profile domestic dissidents and eliminate privacy of all Americans in the United States. That DARPA's past total surveillance dragnet is coming back to life under a supposedly separate health-focused agency confirms that many total awareness, uh, total information awareness-related programs were merely distanced from the Department of Defense when officially shut down by separating the military from the public image of such technologies and programs, it made them more palatable, palatable to the masses. The wearables, the Amazon selling their halo. Understand also, if you do some research, and I've posted many videos on this, unfortunately, I don't know, if I have any videos on Never Lose Truth, but I certainly had videos on my first two channels, Kafka Winston World, the tie between military, Department of Defense, DARPA, um, intelligence agencies, and big tech. So when people say to you, well, Facebook, YouTube, Google, they're private companies. They get to do whatever they want to do. That's why they've been put out as private companies, because they're doing, well, example, censorship. They do for government what government cannot do for itself. Um, as Unlimited Hangout has recently reported major aspects of TIA, were merely privatized. Thank you. Giving rise to companies such as Facebook and Palantir, which, and Palantir, oh, can't remember the guy's name. Um, oh, hang on. Sorry, it's Peter Thiel, founded Palantir, co-founder of PayPal, and very good friend of Donald Trump. Um, no. Sorry. Whoever gets into the White House, understand that they've been selected. Okay. So. Um, and Palantir is like a, a secret data company. So, Palantir and Facebook which resulted in such DARPA projects being widely used and accepted, now under the guise of the proposed ARPA-H, DARPA's original total information awareness, would essentially be making a comeback for all intents and purposes as its own spin-off, Silicon Valley, the military, and the wearable revolution. This most recent effort to create ARPA, ARPA, HARPA, what, whatever, uh, combines well with the coordinated push of Silicon Valley companies into the field of healthcare, specifically Silicon Valley companies that double as contractors to U.S. intelligence and or military, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, their government. Start thinking of these companies as government. During the COVID-19 crisis, this trend toward 
Silicon Valley dominance of the healthcare sector has accelerated considerably due to a top-down push toward digitalization with telemedicine, remote monitoring, and the like. One interesting example is Amazon. They launched their wearable last year that purports to not only use biometrics to monitors, monitor people's physical health and fitness, but to track their emotional state as well. The previous year, Amazon acquired the online pharmacy, PillPack, and it is not hard to imagine that the data from Amazon's Halo wellness ban gives treatment recommendations that are then supplied by Amazon-owned PillPack. Companies such as Amazon, Palantir, and Google are set to be intimately involved. They are intimately involved in virtually everything from intelligence agencies, national security, military, Department of Defense, but they're private companies, really? Okay. So Google launched numerous health tech initiatives in 2020. Uh, they're set to have a major role in this new agency due to its longstanding ties to the Obama, Obama administration when Biden was vice president and now when he's president, um, he picks science advisor Eric Lander. Lander, poised to play a major role in ARPA, if and when it materializes. Before becoming the top scientist in the country, Lander was president and founding director of the Broad Institute. While advertised as a partnership between MIT and Harvard, the Broad Institute is heavily, heavily influenced by Silicon Valley with two former, 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 <laughs> sorry, Google executives on its board, a partner of Silicon Valley venture capital firm Greylock Partners, and the former CEO of IBM, as well as some of its top endowments coming from prominent tech executives. This is a, yeah, a new normal pushing us into the new world order where, well, everybody will be wearing a wearable and they will be tracking everything. Not just our physical signs, but our emotions and thoughts. Former, former, Google CEO Eric Schmidt, who was intimately involved with Obama's 2012 re-election campaign and who is close to the Democratic Party in general, chairs the Broad Institute as of this April. Learning that, when I was reading this article, yeah, that's an eye roll. In March, Schmidt gave the Institute $150 million to, quote, connect biology and machine learning for understanding programs of life, unquote. During his time on the Broad Institute board, Schmidt also chaired the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence, a group of mostly Silicon Valley intelligence and military operatives who have now charted, charted the direction of the U.S. government's policies on emerging tech and AI. Schmidt was also pitched as potential head of a tech industry task force by the Biden administration. Earlier in January, the Broad Institute announced that its health research platform, Tira, which was built with Google subsidiary Verily, would partner with Microsoft. As a result, Tira now owns, allows, I'm sorry, Tira now allows Google and Microsoft to access a vast trove 
of genomic data, genes, our genes, that is poured into the platform by academics and research institutions from around the world. Last September, Google teamed up with the Department of Defense as part of a new AI-driven predictive health program that also links to the U.S. intelligence community. While initially focused on predicting cancer cases, this initiative clearly plans to expand to predicting the onset of other diseases before symptoms appear, including COVID-19. One of the ulterior motives was Google to gain access to the largest repository of disease and cancer-related medical data in the world, which is held by the Defense Health Agency. Having exclusive access to this data is a huge boon for Google in its effort to develop and expand its growing suite of AI healthcare products, but that's not all. Why do they want our DNA? All of that testing and all of the blood consumed in, you know, how, 15 months? The blood banks, they've been collecting our DNA because they want to know our genomic makeup. And knowing that with all of this technology, they can certainly control our life. The military is currently being used to pilot COVID-19 related biometric wearables for returning to work safely. Last December, it was announced that Hill Air Force Base in Utah would make biometric wearables a mandatory part of the uniform for some squadrons. Must, they, they must wear a smart watch made by Garmin and a smart ring made by Aura, Oa, Aura, as part of their uniform. You know, I, I just, I went to, after reading that, you can watch this, the story behind this new Aura ring. And, well, it's a wearable. And apparently it helps you sleep. And it makes you, well, better than what you think you are, a ring. Well, this ring is picking up data from your body and sending it off to DARPA, Military Defense, Really? People are doing this? I guess so. According to the Air Force, these devices detect biometric indicators that are then analyzed for 165 different biomarkers by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, uh, Philips Healthcare AI algorithm that, quote, attempts to recognize an infection or virus around 48 hours before the onset of symptoms. The development of that algorithm began well before uh, this COVID-19 crisis and is a recent iteration of a series of military research projects that appear to have begun under the 2007 DARPA Predicting Health and Disease Project. These wearables are primarily intended for mass use, a big step toward the infrastructure needed for the resurrection of a biosurveillance program to be run by the national security state to monitor your biometric data, including your emotions. One indicator for the push for mass use, the Aura Smart Ring, recently was used by the NBA to prevent 
COVID-19 outbreaks among basketball players. Prior to COVID-19, it was promoted for consumer use by members of the British royal family and Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey for improving sleep. Or as CEO Harpeet Ray, I'm horrible at pronouncing names, so forgive me. He said that the entire future of wearable health tech will soon be proactive rather than reactive because it will focus on predicting disease based on biometric data obtained from wearables in real time. Another wearable tied to the military that is creeping into mass use is the bio button and its predecessor, the bio sticker, produced by the company Bio IntelliSense. The sleek new bio button is advertised as a wearable system that is, quote, a scalable and cost-effective solution for COVID-19 symptom monitoring at school, home, and work, unquote. I'm sure most of you realize this is coming. Bio and Telesense received $2.8 million from the Pentagon last December to develop the bio button and bio sticker wearables for COVID-19. Bio and Telesense, co-founded and led by former Microsoft Health Vault developer James Malt, now has its wearable sensors being rolled out for widespread use on some college campuses and at some U.S. hospitals. In some of those instances, the company's wearables are being used to specifically monitor the side effects of COVID-19 vaccines. Ah, really? Okay. Uh, I can't say anything because of the censorship. So let's move on. As opposed to symptoms of COVID-19 itself, BioIntelliSense is currently running a study partnered with Philips Healthcare and the University of Colorado on the use of its wearables for early COVID-19 detection, which is entirely funded by the U.S. military. The use of these wearables is currently encouraged but optional at these pilot locations, except I guess, in the military. But could there come a time when they are mandated in a workplace or by a government? Of course. It would not be unheard of, as several countries have already required foreign arrivals to be monitored through use of wearable, a wearable during a mandatory quarantine period. St. Lucia is currently using the bio button for this purpose. Singapore which seeks to be among the first smart nations in the world, has given every single one of its residents a wearable called a Trace Together token for its contact tracing program. Either the wearable token or the Trace Together smartphone app is mandatory for all workplaces, shopping malls, hotels, schools, healthcare facilities, grocery stores, hair salons, Those without access to a smartphone, you get to have a free government-issued wearable token. So the era of digital dictatorship is nearly here. Making mandatory wearables the new normal, not just for COVID-19 prevention, but for monitoring health in general, would institutionalize quarantining people who have no symptoms of an illness, but only an opaque algorithm's determination that vital signs indicate abnormal activity guaranteed to make regular errors as AI is only as good and accurate as it has been programmed. The question is how many? How many errors? Well, One company, Diagnostic Robotics, I think that's in Boston, Um, their accuracy rate admitted by Diagnostic Robotics is only 73%. 
meaning its AI is wrong 27%, and probably even less considering that it has never been independently verified. This push for wearables is obvious now. Listen to this. It's obvious now. Signs of this agenda were visible several years ago. In 2018, insurer John Hancock announced that it would replace its life insurance offerings with interactive policies that involved individuals having their health monitored by commercial health wearables. Prior to that announcement, John Hancock and other insurers, Aetna, Cigna, United Healthcare, offered various rewards for policyholders who wore a wearable and shared their data with their insurance company. Journal of American Medical Association published an article August 2019 claiming that wearables quote, encourage healthy behaviors and empower individuals to participate in their health, unquote. Insurance companies may very well mandate you wear a wearable. Authors of this article, affiliated with Harvard, further claimed that, quote, incentivizing use of these devices, wearables, by integrating them in insurance policies, unquote, may be an, quote-unquote, attractive policy approach. First, they manipulate. If they don't get what they want, then they mandate. The use of wearables for policyholders has since been heavily promoted by the insurance industry, both prior to and after COVID-19, and some speculate that health insurers could soon mandate uh, their use. But for sure, Medicaid and Medicare, don't you think they're going to want people to wear wearables? And if you don't wear the wearable, you don't get benefits. Biometric fitness devices such as Amazon's Halo monitor more than physical vital signs, your emotional state, ARPA, flagship safe home program, reveals that the ability to monitor thoughts and feelings is an already existing goal of those seeking to establish this new agency. The World Economic Forum luminary and historian Harari the, according to him, the transition to digital dictatorship will have a big watershed moment once governments start, mo quote, start monitoring and surveying what is happening inside your body and inside your brain, unquote. He says that the mass adoption of such technology would make human beings, quote, unquote, hackable animals, while those who abstain from having this technology on or in their bodies would become part of a new, useless class. Ow. Harari has also asserted that biometric wearables will someday be used by governments to target individuals who have the quote-unquote wrong emotional reactions to government leaders. Talk about Orwellian. One of Harari's biggest fans, Mark Zuckerberg, has recently led the company into the development of a comprehensive biometric and neural wearable based on technology from a neural interface startup that Facebook acquired in 2019 per Facebook the wearable, quote, will integrate with AR, augmented reality, VR, virtual reality, and human neural signals, neural brain. And 
is set to become commercially available soon. Facebook also notably owns the VR company Acolis, Acolis Rift, whose founder, Palmer Lucky, now runs the U.S. military, AI, contractor, and Dural. Um, Facebook was shaped in its early days, and please click on the hyperlinks if you want to learn more. Facebook was shaped in its early days to be a private sector replacement for DARPA's controversial LifeLog program. Not a private company as we know them. LifeLog sought to both humanize AI and build profiles on domestic dissidents and terror suspects. It appears that current trends and events show that DARPA's decades-long effort to merge health security and national security have now advanced further than ever before. This may partially be because Bill Gates, who has wielded significant influence over health policy globally in the last year, is a longtime advocate of fusing health security and national security to thwart both pandemics and bioterrorists before they can strike. Because he loves us and he wants all of us to just stay alive and be healthy. In the merging of national security and health security, any decision or mandate promulgated as a public health measure could be justified as necessary for national security. Much in the same way that the mass abuses and war crimes that occurred during the post-9-11 war on terror were similarly justified by national security with little to no oversight. Yet in this case, instead of only losing our civil liberties and control over our external lives, we stand to lose sovereignty over our individual bodies. NH NIH, which would house HARPA, has spent hundreds of millions of dollars experimenting with the use of wearables since 2015, not only for detecting disease symptoms, but also for monitoring individuals' diets and illegal drug consumption. Hmm. Biden played a key part in that project, known as the Precision Medicine Initiative, and separately highlighted the use of wearables in cancer patients as part of the Obama administration's related cancer moonshot program, the third Obama-era health research project, was NIH's Brain Initiative, which was launched, among other things, to, quote, develop tools to record, mark, and manipulate precisely defined neurons in the living brain that are determined to be linked to an abnormal function or a neurological disease. Yes, it's always posed as just a fabulous uh, technology that's going to help humankind. And it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Hey, it was Obama. It was his brain initiative. And, and it, well... You're programmed to believe. You're programmed to believe everything that you hear from your authority figure. That's too bad. These Obama initiative initiatives took place at a time when Eric Lander was the co-chair of Obama's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology while still leading the Broad Institute. It is hardly a coincidence that Eric Lander is now Biden's top science advisor, elevated to a new cabinet-level position and set to guide the course of ARPA. Biden's newly announced agency, if approved by Congress, which I have no doubt it will be, would integrate those past Obama-era initiatives with Orwellian applications 
under one roof, but with even less oversight than before. It would also seek to expand and mainstream the uses of these technologies and potentially move toward developing policies that would mandate their use. It will be used to resurrect dangerous and long-standing agendas of the national security state. And I frankly think that it's not even a resurrection, but it's a progression. So it will be used to resurrect dangerous and long-standing agendas of the national security state and its Silicon Valley contractors creating a digital dictatorship that threatens human freedom, human society, and potentially the very definition of what it means to be human. The link is below.